Hello and welcome to the Burlington Mayor Show for the month of December at the end of 2022. Thanks for joining us. Uh, it's been a little while since we've had one of these shows and um, I'm excited to come and kind of do a little bit of a year of reflection. Um, in particular, we're going to talk about some of the major projects that we've been uh, moving forward, I've hit major milestones in 2022. It's uh, it's been a satisfying year in that way. Um, I'm joined today by uh, the communications director for for the mayor's office for the city of Burlington, Samantha Sheehan, and we're going to kind of tag team this. Um, Samantha's got some some questions, and we also would be happy to take your questions. Um, uh, I, I say that, and then I look around and. I don't see a phone. I assume we can still take uh, take <laughs> take questions. I'm looking at the town uh, meeting TV folks, and I, I think I think we can take your your calls. If uh, we can, we'll get the phone number up. Um, but it, uh, <laughs> well, we're going to dive in, and we'll see what happens with that. So, um, Samantha, where should we start? So, I think we should start with uh, a project that's not complete, but I think folks are really happy to see. Um, activity in progress on, and that is the City Place project. Yes, to say it's not complete is uh, is uh, certainly accurate. It's only um, it looks a little bit more uh, um, worked on than that photo there on the left side of the screen, which was the day, really for the first the day that after four years of construction completely being stopped since the demolition ended in 2018. Uh, it started up again, and uh, that is a picture of the um, three local partners, as well as one of their top lieutenants, uh, Patrick O'Brien. The three partners are Dave Farrington, Al Seneca, and Scott Ireland, and uh, that's me in there as well. And um, the project, that project is underway again. And if you go to the site right now, there's um, a lot of heavy equipment uh, on the site, and it is... Um, uh, they are preparing for the first concrete. It's possible. I, haven't, I didn't check it on it today. So uh, they know they were building forms. And uh, basically the plan is to work through the winter and start pouring concrete. And um, they are still working on the, the financing for uh, some of the, uh, for, for each of the three buildings that they're planning on building there. That's on the right. You can see a uh, image of what one of the buildings uh, will look like if people are interested in, in seeing more than they go to the city place website and they've got a, they got videos and renderings but I mean this is this is a, this is a big step forward so uh, you know this is a project that we have been pursuing really as a city for a decade in some ways and that we laid out there in the, the, the plan BTV planning document a decade ago that we wanted to see this f this the former mall return to being a mixed use neighborhood as it, as it was for for many years and but hasn't been since it was torn down in the 60s we want to get back the public streets um, there's the potential you know th this is a opportunity for us probably to take the single biggest step we could take in any one project towards addressing the housing crisis with more than 400 uh, homes planned for the site including um, you know, over 85 permanently affordable homes when this project is done, it, it already this site is one of the biggest property taxpayers in the in the city. When this is done, it will be by far the biggest property tax paying um, block of any block in the, in the city uh, for both this, the municipal taxes as well as the education tax. And uh, it does feel like after some real trials and challenges, it, this project is, is on its way. And this represents some really significant investment, um, not just by the partners here, um, but also in terms of building new public infrastructure. Do you want to talk about that? <clears throat> yes, exactly right. So the, the, the um, project will result in the Pine Street and St. Paul Street, these streets that were kind of cut off and severed in the 1960s during urban renewal. Um, we are getting those street connections back. Um, and we are also um, going to be building up to uh, another, as many as seven uh, rebuilt blocks of infrastructure in the surrounding blocks. Um, we just got, uh, I think we're, we're, we're expecting here very soon on whether um, we are successful at uh, securing some federal funds through the new uh, infrastructure bills that are out there that would be in addition to the local funds generated by the tax increment financing. So the future taxes that this 
project will um, pay uh, can be kind of uh, banked on now. We can borrow against them and, and make public infrastructure improvements based on those taxes. And it's, uh, you know, I think that what people should have in mind are the two blocks of uh, the newly rebuilt St. Paul Street, um, really uh, attractive, um, appealing public spaces created by you know, that kind of public investment. We're going to have that on up to nine blocks um, when this project is done. And staying on the theme of uh, infrastructure projects, um, this one might be lesser known, um, but a really important long overdue investment for the folks in this neighborhood in Franklin Square. So this is one of these really generational projects that's been in the works for about 45 years here at Franklin Square. Yeah, that's right. So the Franklin Square is a Burlington Housing Authority um, pro property um, where um, that was built, yeah, 45 years ago. And I guess it was always unclear exactly where the different uh, responsibilities lay with um, respect to the, the, the public infrastructure, the streets that are around, in the, around the property. And so for a long time, there was disagreements between the city and, um, and the housing authority over, over what should happen. And as a result, very little happened. And you really saw the streets and sidewalks and some of the lighting and other, um, I think, some water infrastructure fall into disrepair. Uh, Chapin Spencer working with, so Chapin Spencer, our public works director, working with Ali Jang, the um, Ward 8 city councilor, uh, were able to work with the housing authority and really put all, uh, just address all of these um, uh, th these concerns and this uncertainty. There, there had been a tentative agreement apparently for some years ago that, that had never been followed through on. Uh, we got the agreement done and about $600,000 of infrastructure investment happened in 2022. And that, uh, that, that, that section of town, which does have some of our uh, lower income um, uh, residents of the community is in much better shape than it was at the beginning of the year. And um, with an opportunity to um, enjoy this project coming up uh, just this weekend, um, you want to talk about the Moran Frame in, in October? We celebrated, or sorry, in November, we celebrated the end of phase one and the opening of the new Moran Frame. Yeah, this is, this is also pretty exciting. And yes, uh, so he, here's, um, that's, I, <clears throat> you can see on the screen now, there's, there's the power plant when it was, um, I think, still operating. I'm not sure exactly the date on that, but um, sometime um, it, uh, it was built in the, in the 50s and it operated until the mid 80s. And then it has been shut down ever since. And the city's been trying to figure out what to do with it ever since. There's, as you know, I'm sure some of the watch viewers know, been a series of different proposals for the building that never quite worked out. Um, what we moved forward with starting in 2020 um, with the full support of the city council was using $6 million of tax increment financing dollars that really, their economic development dollars that really need to be used on the waterfront. And we were able to uh, take down the bricks and really clean up the site, as you can see there on the, the left image. Um, and, you know, Samantha, what I, I um, have been saying to folks of late is I, I think every, just about everyone I've talked to agrees that this is a, a big improvement. I mean, you, that picture on the right isn't what the Moran plant looked like in recent years. I've been completely overgrown and the windows were broken and, and uh, it was really falling apart. It really becomes some uh, kind of derelict eyesore on the, on the lakefront. Um, pretty much everyone agrees that we, uh, this is a big improvement, what we have on the left, but I do sense that a lot of people don't really get it yet. It's a little unusual to just see this uh, iron works um, sh shooting up out of a park. Uh, I think what my hope is and belief is, is that over the course of 2023, people are going to start to get it a, a lot more as we start using the site for events, for recreation, for our food, for arts. There's a, there is a first example of that coming up on December 31st uh, during our highlight celebration. There is going to be an exhibit down there um, called, it's got a fun name. Let me see. Lost Objects. 
Lost objects. Lost uh, objects from the subsurface experience. Yeah, there you go. Tonight. I thought it was a little more than just yeah. that. Lost objects from the subsurface. So you can go down there between 5 and 9 p.m. during highlight on, uh, on New Year's Eve, and there's going to be some lights and various art pieces there. And there's, this is the first of a series of um, events that are going to take place over the course of really the first half into the summer of 2023. We're going to be kind of experimenting with it as we also develop plans for a second phase that will um, really enhance our ability to, to, to use the area. And, and uh, there's a lot of work already going on on the second phase. It's pretty exciting. And uh, I, I'm pretty optimistic in 2023 we'll be able to announce uh, further where we're headed with this, this, new, this new resource. When we built it, it was built with the idea that we were creating this framework that could be added to over time. And I think we're going to try to follow up on, on that right, right away. One of my favorite fun facts about the Moran Frame Project is that um, this was a 100-day commitment when you were first elected to make a go or no-go. <laughs> we made that go, no-go decision on day, uh, I think we slipped into day 101, which oh. was to not go forward with, uh, with the previous concept, which I, I was, it was quite expensive, had a lot of risk and uncertainty involved in it. Um, it took us a little while longer to, to, to figure out what we would get done. But yes, I do feel um, uh, I, I'm excited that we've been able to bring some resolution to this uh, big issue that has been hanging out there for, for decades. It's definitely been one of my, um, you know, when I, when I it, that was a campaign promise that we'd figure it out in the first hundred days. I had this larger kind of campaign theme, which was that we would get stuck installed projects uh, moving. And, um, you know, as we go through here, this 2022 has definitely been a year in which some projects that had been, uh, in, you know, uh, uh, in, in suspension in one form or another, that were, that were challenged in one form or another um, in 2022, not just Moran, we've had some progress some, with some others that have been waiting for a long time. Like the next one on our list, which is the Shelburne Roundabout. Yes, Shelburne round, Roundabout. Um, uh, apparently, you know, a little less high, high profile than, than some, some others, but this is, it's really been a problematic intersection for a long time. Uh, I think it first went on to the state's high crash uh, list back um, right around the turn of the century. And um, really, you had a very awkward uh, rotary there before this. I would, I live not too far from this intersection and you know, very frequently when you come by this intersection, you'd see people navigating it the wrong way. This roundabout really does away with that and uh, makes it, um, it, it's, it's a $7.7 .7 million investment. Um, all of it, state and uh, I guess actually all federal highway uh, funds. And um, if you haven't been there yet, you should check it out. It, it's, uh, uh, I think it's pretty intuitive for most people driving through. It is a somewhat unusual feature to see in this part of uh, the, the, the world. The only one in Chittenden County. The first one in Chittenden County, apparently. There's, a, I think, 20 some odd others in the rest of Vermont, but this is the first in Chittenden County. And um, it, uh, it, it is much safer. There will be many less, fewer crashes here. When there are crashes in rotaries, they tend to be uh, low speed, um, not very dangerous crashes. And this rotary was built in such a way that there's good pedestrian infrastructure and bike infrastructure as well. It's, uh, it's a big improvement. And we haven't really talked about it in the other projects we've discussed, um, but in those and here in the Shelburne Roundabout, this included some really significant stormwater and wastewater investment as well. Yeah, that's right. Um, the, there, you can't really, you can't see it if you go there, but there, there is an enormous underground tank when we were first it's in the early stages of construction. It kind of looked like we we're building a swimming pool or something because it really has this pool length underground concrete tank that can hold um, an enormous volume of water during big storm events. This is sort of an interesting thing that people often misunderstand almost Every time we do a major public infrastructure project or you see a new building built in Burlington, um, <clears throat> when we do construction today, we really think about stormwater in a way that people didn't used to. We think about protecting the lake and almost um, uh, always there is some kind of um, 
uh, new infrastructure that, that helps with our storm events, that slows down how quickly water that falls on the roof of a building or a roadway enters into the storm system um, when, during, during a storm. It really reduces the storm surge. And that's really the problem that we have here in Burlington is that we have these combined wastewater, stormwater pipes that, um, that get overwhelmed in a big storm and really can lead in, in a few times a year to these overflow events where some untreated mixed stormwater and wastewater flow, flows into the lake. Projects like this, Project City Place as well, um, make that less likely to happen because, uh, be, because we, we create these uh, ability to sort of hold back water during the storm events and reduce that storm surge. Yeah, the, the engineering and the design and planning that went to the Shelburne Road Roundabout are all impressive, including over 7,000 bulbs planted. And um, there will be, beginning early next year, a process for public art under the new, um, newly instituted 1% for public arts. It's, it's going to be quite a nice little gateway to the city when those uh, bulbs are blooming and when we get some, uh, a nice significant piece of public art in the middle of that. Yep. Okay. I've lost track of where I am in my notes. All right. I think uh, maybe the next is... Uh, Champlain Parkway. <clears throat> So the Champlain Parkway also moved forward in 2022 after, in this case, a 34-year hiatus um, between when the uh, federal courts shut down the project in, um, uh, when was 34 years ago? In the, well, I'm 35, in the so that's impressive to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, the... Uh, and, you know, it's easy to miss if you don't get kind of down in the you know, west of Pine Street, you might not know this, a massive construction site uh, under underway right now, m multiple blocks of new uh, roadway has been cleared and, and some storm, and here too, stormwater is definitely one of the big themes. A lot of new stormwater improvements related to the parkway have been installed. Um, we are still waiting for the final go ahead from a federal judge that will happen in we hope and uh, are pretty optimistic about in the spring of, uh, of um, next year. Um, and uh, this is a project too. It's I think one that people have been talking about for so long. People actually get, get surprised by some of, some of the details. The, what the image that people see here is one of the intersections on Pine Street uh, where um, you can get an example there how pedestrian safety is going to be significantly improved by these sort of bump outs at the intersections where the road is narrowed and the sort of raised intersections that's going to slow down uh, car traffic. Um, we will also, the, the new section of roadway will, will connect to the kind of road to nowhere that goes under one, you know, from the extension of 189 to the street grid at Home Avenue and Flynn and Sears and then Lakeside Avenue. That uh, that's where the work is happening currently, and um, uh, when it is done, there will be some real benefits to uh, getting tr trucks out of neighborhoods that uh, currently, you know, on trucks on their way down to that industrial area on Flynn Avenue have to go through these sort of small residential neighborhoods. They won't have to do that anymore. Um, and there will also be uh, you can get a sense for it in that photo. Actually, uh, there's a uh, on the left, the kind of upper left side of the screen, you can see the multi-use path that will be a significant improvement for bikers and uh, and pedestrians on the on the west side of Pine Street. So, uh, you know, it's got some really positive features to it. I also just think it is great to get this resolved and done. I, I, I definitely yes. think these projects that we have to keep working on year after year, talking about year after year, taking staff time, taking public attention, uh, it's, it's really a problem and uh, it's especially a problem when we know the challenges that we face in the decades ahead are our infrastructure challenges with our aging infrastructure. It's re-adjusting to an electrified uh, society. We're going to have to do a lot of a, a lot of renewable installations and, and uh, electric infrastructure is going to need to be built. We need to build a lot more housing. We need to get these projects resolved and keep keep moving forward. And I do think that's going to require some systemic changes going forward because it's it's too hard to get projects like this done. Way too hard. I mean, it's 34 years since construction stopped, 
but um, almost 60 years or maybe even over 60 years since the project started. Yeah, that's right. Even before before that shutdown, there had been a long history leading up until then. I, I really think this is one of the uh, most significant issues this country has to confront in the years ahead is how do we get away from kind of uh, having the kind of vitocracy that we have in many cases now where a very small number of individuals or one person even can hold back community progress. Uh, when we have so many important things for the public to do, we, we, we need to find a way to be able to make these decisions and get them done that works very differently than it does today. Absolutely. Um, and then in a totally different part of the city, we also celebrated the opening of a long-awaited, not, not 34 year long-awaited, but a long-awaited improvement up on the UVM campus. Yeah, people will know University Place. It cuts through the UVM campus. It's actually a city-owned street. Um, uh, and uh, this is a collaboration where UVM really, um, basically this collaboration came about in part, people will remember when we did the big infrastructure push in 2016. UVM came to the table with Champlain College with voluntary contributions to that infrastructure effort. Um, they put millions of dollars in um, really an unprecedented level of uh, infrastructure investment by uh, UVM and Champlain College. And uh, as part of that agreement, we agreed that this would be one of the priority projects in the, in the coming years. And you can see it's a really nice upgrade of University Place. The bike infrastructure now will be much better. Um, the, again, there's sort of raised intersections uh, that are attractive and that will keep vehicle speed, speed slow. It's become a one-way street now. Um, the, it's been designed in such a way that you can have uh, food trucks um, uh, in, in a, a sort of central section. There, are always, there always were some food trucks there, but they, uh, there's now the proper infrastructure for it. It's, uh, it's a really nice enhancement of the center of the UVM campus. And uh, uh, that other photo showed the, the groundbreaking we had with uh, President Caramella. It was a, it was a nice, uh, nice, nice uh, uh, collaboration and a nice accomplishment together. And another roughly quarter million there in ARPA funds for stormwater investment. Five minutes, wow. Um, okay, with five minutes left, we have Amtrak and then the airport. Which one do you want to do? Well, quickly, um, hopefully people have heard for the first time in about 70 years, we now have uh, train service coming to downtown Burlington once again. Uh, that's a picture of me with my two daughters as we boarded the train to head down to New York City for the weekend. We had, it all worked great. The, we had great fall views, and there, there's good Wi-Fi on the train, and it's, it's spacious, and it, it's, uh, it, it's a very positive experience. I'm glad we have it back, and the train leaves every day at 10, 10 a.m., and you can go check out you know, go to the Amtrak website if you're uh, looking for tickets. And on the transportation theme, big year at the Burlington International <laughs> Airport. <laughs> yes, so this is, uh, there are two big projects. One just f finished construction and one is mid-construction. This one, so the, on the right there you see uh, the project that's done, which is, we call it, it's, uh, it, it's the, we call it the, TIP, which stands for what? Terminal Integration Project, um, and it is a $19 million project, all paid for by the federal government, really uh, funds that Senator Leahy uh, secured to make this substantial um, addition to the airport. This has immediate positive impacts on the airport. It's a much more streamlined experience now going through security. It, um, it, the, there's also all new equipment in there, and it's uh, it's working quite it's working great. Um, I was just through there recently. It also is built in such a way that future expansion will uh, build off of off of that terminal, and uh, it, it's really a very forward-looking project. I think well positions the airport for decades to come. Um, that when you're at the kind of uh, edge of that building, the the tip as we were just looking at, you can kind of look across the airfield and see this, which is the first phase of what will ultimately be a 350,000 square foot, huge building, um, a manufacturing building owned by Beta Industries, where they uh, 
very soon we'll start fabricating new electric uh, airplanes as they continue to pioneer and innovate in just a, a remarkable way. We worked very hard. You know, we've, we've done a number of agreements um, with Beta over the last, I don't know, five years or so as they've been growing. It was a real priority of mine to keep them at the Burlington International Airport as they pursued this really kind of remarkable vision. And that building is now part of a 75-year uh, uh, land uh, lease that um, we certainly hope means that they will continue to grow and expand here in Burlington for, for many years to come. And, uh, it, you know, if they do that, it's going to have a real positive impact on this uh, region's economy. There, there will be hundreds of jobs directly in that building, and we know that every new tech job creates something like seven additional jobs in the immediate area. So this is, uh, this is really one of the most exciting things that's happening in the greater Vermont uh, economy right now, Chittenden County economy, and it's uh, awesome that the airport's been able to be a big part of that uh, in 2022. It's really exciting. I think they're at already over 400 employees with hundreds more to uh, occupy that manufacturing facility. Yeah, so, it's, uh, it's, hard, it's hard to keep up with. They've, they've been on such a hiring uh, sprint for, for years now, and, and opening that facility is going to uh, propel that even further. So whew, I think we are just about uh, out of time. Thank you all for, for tuning in tonight. Samantha, thank you. It was fun to do that uh, together. Um, we will be back uh, in the new year with more Burlington Mayor shows. We try to do these basically every, every month. Thank you for, for tuning in tonight. Happy holidays. Have a great new year, and we'll see you in 2023.